All right, I'm the Fly Rate Master, and today we're talking about look at TSBs. Okay, so I'm gonna rag on a tech that's here in the shop. I've already talked to him about it once and had to talk to him about it again today. And it keeps biting him. So hopefully he learns the importance of looking up TSBs, recalls. I'll tell the story. We've got a Nissan here with a poor pedal. If he'd have bothered to look up TSBs or go to Carfax, he'd have seen a issue with a spongy pedal. The fix from Nissan is to flush out the system to dot four and do an ABS bleed. If that doesn't fix it, you put an ABS module in it. Well, we haven't test driven it yet, but that's what fixed it. It now has a good pedal. He's still got to test drive it in the morning, but it looks like it's fixed, but he got bit again by not reading TSBs, service information that would have led him to the fix. And I don't know if I've ever said this on video, but I say it a lot here. Our jobs is a lot about gathering information, whether it be looking through service information to find out how to do the job or looking through TSBs to find a possible solution to a problem we're having. It should always be an initial step. When you get pull a vehicle in, you have a complaint, you should always check for TSBs that are related to your issue. Why? Because it might be a really easy fix rather than a hair pulling debacle because you didn't find the problem or you didn't fix the problem. You always need to be looking at your service information. Now, if, you're, if you work at a shop that doesn't have service information, either they need to get it or you need to move out because every shop needs service information. We have Identifix and all data and we use both constantly. One complements the other. We're not getting rid of either, hopefully, but we need to have information to determine if there's a problem that needs to be fixed one way or another, other than putting parts on it that it doesn't need or going left when you should be going right or right when you, you know, whatever. Same with check engine lights. If you're working on a check engine light, if you're not familiar with the code on that vehicle, know what I said, that vehicle, code setting criteria should be one of the very first things you look at. Why is that code setting? What specific reason will set this code? It's not a hard thing to do, but it gives you so much information. Information that nine times out of 10 isn't in the trouble tree. You know, we've all been there. We, tech, we pull out a trouble tree. I'll pick on Ford on this one. You know, cam sensor fault code. So you go through and check, you know, ohms between the, the cam sensor and the BCM. You check for ohms on the sensor, yada, yada, yada. And at the end of it, it has you put the cam sensor in. And if that doesn't fix it, you put a BCM in it. And all along, it was out of time why it said a cam code. Not because the cam sensor was bad, but because it was out of time. It's stupid, I know, but that's for it. I'm sure there'll be comments on that one, but you know, Honda does the same thing, you know, wing this part at it, wing that part on it. When it all else fails, put a PCM in it because you know, all trouble trees end in it needs a PCM. It's really important when you pull a car in you always need to check TSBs. There may be one that, you know, even if it's just a check engine light, you know, how many times do we run into, you know, Chrysler's with PO128s that need a thermostat and a PCM update? Or it's the, you're the third shop and they can't get rid of that PO128 because everybody's thrown a thermostat at it and nobody did the reflash. 
I was talking to a mobile programmer and he was talking about, you know, Nissan PO 101 mass airflow sensor code. And he's like, I really don't know if, you know, without putting three or four mass airflow sensors on it, if the reflash will actually fix it. Cause I don't think I've ever done it is what he said. Why? Because technicians don't look at TSBs. That is a clear TSB from Nissan. It's not a question. It's like, uh, this is a false code. Program it. You know, pulling hair out for a code that you can't get rid of because there's a reflash for it. Always, always, always research a problem because you never know, you know, XYZ might be the problem at that TSB that you didn't bother to look up, might have fixed the car a whole lot faster than, you know, four mass airflow sensors, including one from the dealer, because it's got to be a, a aftermarket sensor, right? Look at TSBs. I can't stress that enough. Look at your service information, look up TSBs, look up bulletins, get all the information you can on a problem before you go winging parts at it. So. I know this was a little bit of a rant, but it's an important thing for young technicians to hear. Use your service information, gather your data before you chuck parts. So thanks for watching. I am the Flight Rate Master.